Good morning. The date is uh, April 18th, 2020. And uh, your mom and I are stuck down here in Texas because of the virus this year. And uh, we've been spending a lot of time getting to know each other <laughs> and, uh, and also trying to get along. <laughs> But we've, we've done a pretty good job. This morning I'm gonna tell you about uh, going to work with my dad or actually working with my dad. His situation was a little different. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you about Clarence, my father. He uh, didn't have a, a high school education, but pretty smart guy, I think. He was a hardworking man and uh, he, began to work as, in his younger years as, a, as working downtown, running, working in a shop, uh, doing different things. I know at one time, I, uh, all of his working life, I know he worked with RCA for a while, uh, but he worked in a jewelry store. And uh, he did, ran errands and did work around the jewelry store. And, and then he tried to learn, I think kind of on his own, the craft, it's a, it's a craft that's, no longer in existence, as far as I know, of hand engraving in metal. And uh, he worked very hard at that, learning that trade as a, as a young man in a, in a jewelry store. I don't know the name of the jewelry store. I've been told, but I don't, don't remember. Uh, but he also learned diamond setting, uh, the skill of diamond setting, and was very good at it. And uh, in his later years, when I was a young man uh, growing up, he uh, started his own business called Rumpke Jewelry. And in it, he did engraving and, uh, and diamond setting. And then he sold uh, diamond wedding rings and other types of rings on the side and manufactured rings uh, to sell. And um, he had a store in on the fourth floor, 411 State Life Building. It was State Life Building at the time. I think it turned into the name, the Thomas Building. And that I'll tell you more in another story. There's another story about that. But uh, it was a two-room office. Uh, one room was kind of the workroom, and then the other one is a, we had a showcase with rings in it and different uh, uh, things to show customers that might come in. Or were most of the of the people that he dealt with were word of mouth people that uh, now walk in because it was on the 11th floor of the building. And uh, but so. Anyway, that's that was his his job. He he was the owner of Rumpke Jewelry, and uh, it did quite well for a man of his age, and 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 worked at it a long time. But anyway, when I was in in my oh I would say around my seventh and eighth grade levels, when I would think it was, uh, uh, we went down to uh, dad would take us and start us us or th us and my two brothers. Uh, as we got uh, uh, around high school age or near before, we became errand boys for the for the work. We worked for Rumpke Jewelry, and we would go down after school when we could uh, during the year. If you were younger, you wouldn't do that, or during athletic seasons when I was playing baseball or basketball, uh, why uh, I would be off. I wouldn't work that time. I might work weekends, which we did a lot of weekend work, Saturday work, and uh, spent a lot of time down there. And while I was and and working with my dad, and 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 he paid us all, and he also uh, hired different uh, teenagers in the community as as he needed an errand person. Uh, that errand person's job was to mainly in the afternoon and the morning run a route in downtown Indianapolis. There were three main big um, supermarkets, not supermarkets, but uh, three main big shopping stores downtown. Uh, L.S. Ayers was one, and Wassons was another one, and Block Company was another one. Uh, I don't think any of them are in existence anymore. But uh, we would uh, take a satchel with us or a bag, and we would go to the different departments in that store. Like I would go to L.S. Ayers and, uh, and go to the jewelry department, go to the silverware department, and see if they had any jewelry to pick up or uh, that would needed to be engraved, you know, with a with a letter on the jewelry or on the or on the uh, silverware set or something like that, or any other work that might 
they might need to have dad do because he knew all the departments and the heads of the departments in these stores and they knew that he was a good workman and and uh, uh, he would stand behind his work and then i would go to the next store the next store three stores usually and other stores around town if downtown indianapolis if need be there were other jewelers that we did business with we had uh uh, Eggerding was an, uh, one at a, at a shop on the circle. Well, he would do um, a certain type of jewelry work that my dad didn't do, wouldn't do, but dad would do diamond setting, and, and he didn't do diamond setting. So they would kind of trade off their work, and uh, and and of course there was a fee if it was more work for one and more work for the other. But anyway, I would maybe go to those problems, but that usually is one where we had uh, I was sent there because of a need. On a regular route was, a, but in the in the meantime that I was working there, I uh, learned how to run an engraving machine. Uh, we had a large, small engraving machine, and we had a larger engraving machine, and we would do trophies in the larger engraving machine, and it amounted to learning how to center the item up in the machine and to uh, size the size you needed for that particular. Uh, whether it was a big letter or small letter, or small letter for names, to center it all up in the right place, and to and it was it was a tool that it embedded into the metal and scratched that you would say scratched, but it wasn't a scratch. It was a dug of the metal out in the letter or name of the person, and we would do a lot of things like engrave names and and initials on on bracelets or heart. Uh, uh, little heart charms that would go on women's bracelets or cigarette lighters. At the time, a lot of people were smoking. We had Zippo cigarette lighters we would engrave. A lot of, a lot of various items like that that we would engrave. So in the meantime, all of us learned to do that. All of us uh, boys, uh, my two brothers, David and Tom, both worked there and several people, kids in the neighborhood. But usually the kids in the neighborhood didn't learn how to engrave because we spent a lot more time up there. And I was spent a, a lot of time during my high school years and even into college. I worked up there part time uh, if he needed it. If he had a lot of work to do, a lot of the engraving that could be done on an engraving machine. He usually did most of the very um, specific engraving that could not be done on the machine. It was more difficult or it was uh, cut into some type of metal that was more valuable. Uh, he did a lot of amazing work with with rings and cutting initials. I have a I have a signet ring that I have still have that he made me a gold signet ring that had my initials R C R uh, embedded in the top of it, and he carved that. It's like he was carving with tools and car carving metal with tools, which I don't know if it even the, the skill even exists anymore. It's a very difficult skill. You have to be very careful to not hold the tool and slip because you make a mistake and then you have to correct that mistake by either uh, sanding it off and burnishing it and polishing it and then re-engraving. So it is a very high skilled art and uh, that he had and he developed his on his own. You gotta give him a lot of credit. He really worked hard at that. So that was mainly the job that I did with my dad working downtown. I uh, look back on those times and, and although, uh, uh, it was hard. It was hard work for me because uh, I worked some long hours, which I wished I wouldn't have been there at that time. But I did have a lot of time with my dad, and and uh, think backing on that, it was a it was a good time to share with him and in the work setting. So um, that's basically the story of me working with my dad and going to work with my dad. My mother was a was a housekeeper. Uh, she worked for the bookkeeper of the of the Rumpke Jewelry, so she had her role as her, her bookkeeper and uh, uh, billing on the end of the month. And if we had bills to send out statements to people that uh, uh, bought rings or bought, did, had engraving done or had other dirt work done, he did not work on watches. He wasn't on a watchmaker that fixed the inner sides of the watches but he did engrave on the outside of the watches or on the back of the watches, or he could engrave on the inside of a wedding ring. It was amazing how the smallest letters he could do in, in, inside a very small item. Quite a skill, and uh, quite a skill that I admire. And he only had like, he, I think he went to Manual High School for one semester. And uh, this was back in the 20s when he was in high school. 
And uh, so I'll tell you more about that in, a, in another session. Good talking to you, and God bless all of you. We love you all.